Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You won't believe this, but I actually got a white Christmas this year. That hasn't happened in forever. And the groundhog saw its shadow this year, so that means six more weeks of winter. So I'm going to go outside and play in the snow. Wait, what? Where's the snow? What? It's already March. That means it's spring. Fuck. Survival of the Idiots is the episode where SpongeBob and Patrick visit Sandy while she's hibernating and get stuck in the tree dome because the door was frozen shut. This episode aired on March 17, 2001, according to this website, and is also known as the episode where Patrick says, Who you calling Pinhead? This episode is one of the few winter-themed episodes of the series, and because of that, Nickelodeon often airs this episode, as well as other episodes with snow and or winter themes, like episode 91, Snowball Effect from season 3, and 300, Frozen Face Off from season 8, with the actual Christmas episodes of the series as a part of a holiday marathon in December leading up to Christmas. For that, there are probably some people out there that consider this episode to be Christmas themed, but I disagree. Just because there's snow doesn't automatically theme it around Christmas. I mean, there's snow in January and usually February, and that's after Christmas, so therefore, I rest my case. This episode is also known for inventing the duo of Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry, and is considered one of the best Nickelodeon cartoon episodes of all time. So you know what that means, let's watch this episode and see if it truly earns that right. So the episode starts up and Spongebob and Patrick are racing the Sandy's tree dome, but when they get there, they see that it has a metal cover over it and a keep out sign. They go inside and see Sandy on the TV. Did Sandy seriously not lock the door? Spongebob and Patrick saw a pre-recorded message that Sandy left saying that she was hibernating and told any passing bys to not disturb her. That means you Spongebob. What about Patrick? Patrick gives them both water helmets and drains the water despite Spongebob's protests. They find out that it was snowing in Sandy's house and Spongebob was amazed just by the sight of it. Then Patrick took off his helmet and explained to Spongebob that the snow was still water. So Spongebob took off his helmet too and they started playing in the snow. Then they heard snoring from Sandy's tree and went up to see what was inside. In the tree, they saw Sandy, but she was much bigger than usual, presumably from all the acorns she ate. Sandy started talking in her sleep about Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. SpongeBob and Patrick could tell she was dreaming about Texas outlaws and teasing her, making her fidget in her sleep. SpongeBob wants to not disturb her anymore, but Patrick makes a face on his back, and SpongeBob says that that was also disturbing. Their laughter ends up waking Sandy up from her sleep, and she ends up assaulting Spongebob and Patrick while still half asleep, and Spongebob and Patrick were terrified. But soon enough, Sandy fell back asleep, and they snuck away. Patrick takes Lynn out of his belly button, and it magically turns into earmuffs. Spongebob puts them on her, and they work very well. So well that she can't even hear Spongebob and Patrick screaming at the top of their lungs. They go back outside and start speaking in drawl, acting like the outlaws from Sandy's stream, and having a snow fight with each other. Spongebob calls Patrick Pinhead, and they start fighting over which of them should be Dirty Dan. I knew somebody named Dan in college. He wasn't dirty though. The fighting and roughhousing goes on and on, and ends up knocking the earmuffs off Sandy, and she wakes up again. She goes outside, tears off Patrick's head, and when he says he's Dirty Dan, she knocks him to the other side of the tree dome. She then starts chasing Spongebob around her house and gets him cornered in a hole in the ground. Spongebob tries to throw wood at her, but he hits Patrick by accident, and then she beats the shit out of both of them. Sometime later, it started snowing again, and Spongebob and Patrick came out of the graves and tried to escape the tree dome, but they couldn't because the door was frozen shut, which meant they were stuck there until spring. It didn't take long till they were freezing cold and struggling to survive. Spongebob had an idea to burn the bark from Sandy's tree, but he heard Sandy's voice and quickly changed his mind. But soon he and Patrick got an idea that maybe Sandy's fur is why she's able to stay warm when she sleeps every year. Hmm, fur. Maybe my hair is why I don't get as cold as others. Spongebob started to slowly pluck off Sandy's fur, but Patrick gets impatient and starts to get some fur himself. 
When SpongeBob realized how warm Patrick was, he took the tape and started ripping off the rest of Sandy's fur. Why didn't they just stay in the tree? They were very clearly not shivering to death inside the tree. After they got the rest of her fur, they went back outside no longer feeling cold. But immediately after, it turned to spring and Sandy woke up. They tried to leave, but the lock was still frozen. Sandy saw SpongeBob and Patrick outside and she went down to see them. She saw that they took all of her fur when she was asleep and was absolutely furious. I don't blame her for being upset that they took off her fur, but I think she ignored the fact that they were inside the tree dome despite her telling them to not come in. Sandy wrapped them around her body to keep her warm until her regular fur grew back and the episode ends. So that was Survival of the Idiots and I love that episode so much. I have a lot to say about it. I remember very faintly the first time I saw this episode as a kid in any way at all. I turned it on right at the end where Sandy was pissed at Spongebob and Patrick. I was a little startled at that, but I later saw it again and watched it all the way through and understood the context that led to this. I also remember a dream I had where I watched this episode, but the fur plucking scene was before the part where Sandy talked about Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry in her sleep. When I was in middle school, this was one of my most watched episodes during that time. This was the episode of season 2 that I watched the most during those brief years. My favorite part was always when Spongebob and Patrick were fighting each other with items made out of snow and they kept going I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. to each other over and over again. I also wanted to get a couple of friends to come over during winter break specifically to do those scenes. They never came over during that time, but I still got to see them. But of course, that didn't stop me and my best friend from mimicking that scene over and over again. I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. Whether it was winter or not. That was my favorite scene from this episode, but I also love just about everything else from this. I love the funny faces at the beginning when Spongebob and Patrick were running towards Sandy's tree dome. The parts where Sandy wakes up and beats out Spongebob and Patrick thinking they were Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. The part where Sandy kept roaring when Spongebob and Patrick kept taking her fur off. And when Spongebob kept running before we saw that he and Sandy were on her hamster wheel. Just to start off with a few. I also love the gags with the pat back face, Spongebob pulling a megaphone out of nowhere, and the tombstones that are labeled Dirty Dan and Pinhead Larry. There's also a couple fun facts about this episode I always noticed even when I was a kid. This is the second time where there was snow in the tree dome, the first time being episode 47, Bubble Buddy from season 2. And this is also the second time where the metal cover around the tree dome is used, the first being episode 36, Texas from season 1. I also noticed how Spongebob and Patrick were still able to survive without water helmets after all the snow melted. It is a little odd, but it's not worth ranting about. Me thinks that the reason Spongebob and Patrick took off their helmets was because the storyboarders didn't want to draw the helmets on the characters throughout the entire episode. Speaking of which, the whole episode takes place inside the tree dome. I like what they were able to do with these characters in this single location. It is a simple episode with literally only three characters, but simplicity is not a bad thing. This episode still did a decent amount with the singular setting. We got Spongebob and Patrick playing in the snow, teasing Sandy in her sleep, imitating the Texas Outlaws, followed by an action sequence which ends with Sandy beating them up, and then they get stuck in the tree dome leading up to them taking off Sandy's fur. I also love how Sandy is portrayed as being big while she was hibernating and how furious she was whenever she woke up. There's a lot about this episode that just works so insanely well. You can say Sandy was being a jerk, but I will say this. She was still clearly half asleep, so she may not have been 100% aware that she was beating up Spongebob and Patrick. Now you can say two wrongs don't make a right, and to that I say, Spongebob and Patrick are breaking and entering and clearly disobeying Sandy's orders, so this was basically their comeuppance. Speaking of nitpicking, episode 54, Pre-Hibernation Week, talks about Sandy hibernating and teaches Spongebob about hibernation. At the end, he witnessed Sandy fall asleep and was relieved that she started sleeping for the winter after all the extreme activity she made him do. Here, he doesn't know what hibernation is, nor does he know that Sandy was doing such a thing. How did he forget that, especially after all the extreme stuff he did? But we're not here to discuss continuity issues, we're here to discuss this shot. Seriously, nobody noticed Spongebob's foot was missing right here before he got beat up by Sandy? 
But going back to the good stuff, there's still so much I haven't touched on. I love that Patrick is so over the top in this episode. I like how seriously he takes the dirty dance squabble when he immediately takes Sandy's fur using tape and when he seems to be talking about the winter wonderland before he says he was reading a candy wrapper. I also love when Spongebob tries to take the tree bark but puts it back after hearing Sandy's voice. There are so many iconic lines from this episode that still stick with people to this day, and rightfully so. I love this episode from beginning to end, and if you asked me in middle school, this would have been my favorite episode of season 2. Nowadays, I still love it a lot, and it's definitely pretty high up there for me, but it's hard to choose with a season as good as this. But all that matters is that it's great. Survival of the Idiots is an astounding episode, with all of its amazing lines of dialogue, awesome action sequences, and great elements that work so well with all three of the characters in this episode, it's nothing short of a grand time. But I will say it was also way ahead of its time with how quickly the winter season changes. I mean, I have had so many winter seasons over the past few years where I got little to no snow at all. I mean, I get a white Christmas and then spring starts during the last six weeks of winter, like, what? Now my hair's gonna make me feel warm again. <laughs>